As IQ means intelligent quotient, and ID is often used to represent one's identity, they come together to beg the question, how much do you know about yourself? This question is the basis of all of my project. Beginning at age 13, I really began to wonder who I was. Growing up in a Christian family, I always knew I was supposed to find my identity in him. In my head, I knew that was the right answer. I just didn't believe it in my heart. Through my project, I sought to create a culture at Grace Prep that was grounded in knowledge of self and knowledge of God. My name is Abigail Galliano, and this is my project, IDIQ. In May of last year, I presented a completely different project to Mr. Gresh called Cross-Cultural Confidence. Even though in the moment I thought that that project would have been perfect for me, it would not have been nearly as challenging or grown me nearly as much as this one did. In September, I presented my project proposal on identity to Mr. Gresh and received my objectives for my project. For the research portion of my project, I was required to read six books, watch six documentaries, view 25 digital resources such as TED Talks and articles, and contact professionals regarding my topic. I was also required to choose and administer at least 12 personality tests to the entire student body. I was tasked to create an engaging, easy to use database for the teachers to have access to these results. I would do this by designing a logo, creating an intro video, and providing anecdotes to input into the website. Finally, I was required to integrate my project into the Grace Prep curriculum through academics, the enrollment process, D groups, sports, and the overall spiritual life. For my digital research, I listened to five podcasts from Ian Morgan Cron's The Road Back to You series. These podcasts were instructional, explaining the different numbers on the Enneagram. I read a total of seven articles, two articles written by Dr. Caroline Leaf regarding identity, purpose, and what happens when we truly understand our minds, and five articles written by Vance Rains on the topics of privilege, soul care, and why people mask what they're really feeling. Additionally, I watched 11 TED Talks from a variety of speakers on topics such as personality, psychology, and introversion. I watched six documentaries for my project. I found the documentary, The Bad Kids, the most intriguing as it challenges the assumptions about underperforming, disinterested, and even violent students and asks the question, what makes a kid bad? It examines how a community can help them succeed. I really enjoyed this documentary because it was a real life example of Luke 15, where Jesus talks about leaving the 99 for the one. To, co to complete my research objective, I read six books. The Road Back to You by Ian Morgan Cron and The Path Between Us by Susan Stabile highlighted my favorite personality model, the Enneagram, and taught on how the different numbers interact with each other. The Gift of Being Yourself by David Benner was fundamental to the spiritual integration of my project, as it taught me that there can be no self-knowledge without God knowledge. In his book, Please Understand Me, David Kiersey wrote about a model he created based on a 16-type personality model called the Kiersey Temperament Sorter. Written by John Bradley, Discovering Your Natural Talents urges the importance of understanding the call of God on our lives. Finally, The Perfect You, written by Dr. Caroline Leaf, teaches that we have a pre-wired and unique way of thinking that is unlike anyone else in the world. I contacted six professionals regarding my topic to increase my knowledge about the aspects of identity and personality. Vance Rains, pastor of First Church Coral Springs in Florida. Melinda Rains, an art teacher and Enneagram expert at an international school in Guatemala. Sean Peters, a pastor who specializes in identity work in Mosaic, Palm Bay, Florida. Justin LaRosa, a trained Enneagram teacher centered in Tampa. Sue DeFerrari, director of Morningstar Catholic Retreat Center in Miami, and Judith Hansen, a counselor at Power for Living in Boulder, Colorado. The profile development portion of my project, I had to choose a minimum of 12 tests to administer to the students. I wanted to choose tests that covered a variety of different areas of personality. These are the 13 tests I decided to give to the students. I administered the tests through Google Forms. The first Google Form I created was comprised of the Enneagram and Five Love Languages tests. I sent this form to the students on October 11th. The Enneagram is my personal favorite model. 
I found out about it while on a missions trip to Zambia in last July, and I've been fascinated ever since. If taken properly, this test assesses the tendencies of a person in security and in stress. It also identifies the different ways the numbers tend to communicate and hurting messages that the numbers may have received in the past. The five love languages is a very popular test and identifies which way a person communicates and receives love the best. The second personality quiz was sent out on October 31st. The tests were the 16 personality model based on the Myers-Briggs type indicator and learning styles tests. The 16 personality test measures how different people direct their energy, understand information, make decisions, and see the world. I gave this test to the students so they would be able to see different aspects of themselves. I also gave out the learning styles test, measuring which way the students learn the best. I think everyone should be aware of their learning style before they graduate high school, as it could seriously impact the way they ask for help regarding topics that they don't understand. On November 29th, I sent out the third personality quiz containing the spiritual gifts and big five personality tests. I felt like I couldn't create an accurate profile of the students if I didn't include their spiritual gifts. Point of Grace number 12 states that we believe it is the school's privilege to help them discover their spiritual gifts and to show them who God, them, God meant them to be. The Big Five personality traits measures openness, conscientiousness, extroversion, agreeableness, and neuroticism. This test is extremely noted in the psychology and counseling world. The fourth Google form containing the career aptitude and brain type tests was sent out on December 4th. The career aptitude test came from the Princeton Review and helped students figure out how their natural tendencies can thrive in the workforce. The brain type test evaluates how a person views the world. A lot of students enjoyed this test because the results were extremely detailed and comprehensive about the four different brain types. On December 6th, I administered the fifth personality quiz containing a working style test and a political party evaluation. I had the students complete the working style test as it gives them the opportunity to understand how they function best in group environments. The political party evaluation allows the teachers to have a more informed idea about the different st stances the students take. This could be very useful in our global politics and rhetoric and debate classes. I sent the final personality quiz to the students on December 12th. This contained the emotional intelligence and left versus right brain tests. In high school, believe it or not, it can be rather difficult to get a handle on your emotions. I wanted the students to get a better idea of where they're at with their emotional intelligence and the teachers to have access to that information to work alongside of them and to grow with them. I chose the left versus right brain test because similar to a muscle, the brain can be developed and strengthened when used in different ways. This is a testimonial by Rebecca Barker regarding the 13 tests given to the students. Abby's senior project really helped me learn more about myself, especially my personality. I mean, I knew who I was, but the various personality tests really helped me to learn more about myself. My personal favorite was the 16 personalities test. It was scarily accurate. Reading through it, I was able to recognize my different traits, but now they also had names. Then my whole family started taking the test and I could learn more about them too. As a part of my mar marketing objective, I was required to create a logo for IDIQ and an intro video to input into my website. With the help of Connor Williams, Dylan Weibel, and Jonathan Madeira, I was able to complete this bubble. My intro video outlined my motivations for creating the website and walked um, the viewer into each different page. This video is just under two minutes long and is now a part of the homepage on my website. Using Wix Website Designer, I was able to create a database for the teachers to have access to in order to understand their students in a much more comprehensive way. This was perhaps the most challenging part of my project as I spent an estimated 40 hours creating it during Christmas break alone. As the second semester progressed, I've easily spent over 120 hours combined to create this website. My website is comprised of eight sections. My homepage, as I mentioned before, is made up of the intro video and a short anecdote to give an explanation as to why I'm so passionate about this subject. The second section is titled The Tests and has 13 pages outlining where each test came from, why I chose to give it to the students, and gives the teachers an opportunity to take the tests themselves. The following four sections are each of the individual classes. 
Within those sections are pictures of each of the students along with their names. The teachers can click on those pictures and the student's personal profile will come up along with the tests that they took. The seventh section is the staff section. After meeting with the teachers to present my website, they thought it would be helpful to have a section for staff members to have their profiles available to view. Finally, the last section is labeled interpreting the results. Here, I outlined the possible results from each of the different tests and how the teachers could reach all of their students. As a part of my objectives, I was required to integrate my project into the Grace Prep curriculum in the six following ways. On February 8th, Jared allowed me to go into a leadership class to teach the juniors on the importance of knowing their leadership styles. I opened up the class, giving them a link to the test that they were to take. They opened Mark Murphy's leadership style test and completed it. There were four possible results from, it, from this test. I had, the, I had them break into those four groups, and we discussed the things that they agreed with and disagreed with about their evaluated leadership style. We then came, came back together for a group discussion, talking about the strengths and weaknesses of each type. To complete the academic curriculum integration, I presented my IDIQ website to the teachers on March 11th. After working on the website for three months, I was extremely excited to get their feedback and critiques on the site. I introduced the website and talked about my senior project. Then I walked them through each of the different sections and showed them some of the different student profiles. This was an extremely encouraging afternoon because the teachers expressed how much they enjoyed this website. Robbie Gresh said this about my website presentation. It can be difficult to, to support students in a way that is effective given their unique personalities. The ID IQ website has a wealth of information about my students that is clearly organized and helpful in pointing me towards the, using this information to be a more effective teacher. The presentation to go along with the website was professional and questions were handled very well. I believe this can be a valuable tool to enhance teaching and I look forward to applying it in the future. As a part of my curriculum integration, I was required to implement my personality tests into the enrollment process for new students. After I administered my post-test evaluation Google form, I was able to get a better idea of which tests the students thought were beneficial. Based on that information, I added the five love languages, spiritual gifts, 16 personality, learning style, and working style as an optional section for the students to take as a part of their enrollment. On February 27th, I provided each of the D groups with a handout showing the significance of knowing one's spiritual gifts. In this handout, I highlighted eight reasons why every Christian should know their spiritual gifts, along with Bible verses and discussion questions. I included a list with definitions of each of the gifts, along with the students' results from the spiritual gifts test. The responses from both students and D group leaders were extremely encouraging. This is what D group leader Wade Harris said about the handout. I really appreciated Abby facilitating this. It opened up a topic I probably wouldn't have talked about otherwise. I found most of the guys have not talked about spiritual gifts much, and this was a great way to get the conversation going. The inventory results have given the guys a great place to begin serving at their church and school. The hardest section of my curriculum integration to complete was through sports. I received my bubbles after the start of soccer season and couldn't find a convenient time or way to integrate it during the basketball season. In February, however, Riley Redman approached me with the opportunity to co-teach the Lifetime Sports elect Elective during the fourth quarter. During this elective, I will be leading in team building activities and showing the importance of being able to know your team so you can work more successfully together. On January 9th, I completed the spiritual portion of my curriculum integration. During a Wednesday night 242, I had the opportunity to teach over 50 students about the importance of knowing God as a way of getting to know yourself better. Alongside my mentor, Dr. Peter Canizero, we came up with a lesson plan for the evening, highlighting areas such as how we see ourselves, how others see us, and finally, how God sees us. After the message, I asked Dave and Lisa Seibel to come in and pray over each of the students. This entire year has been a learning stretch for me. I knew when I chose to live apart from my family for my senior year, it would come with challenges. I didn't anticipate, however, just how many challenges that would really be. Believe it or not, completing the senior project was one of the main reasons I chose to stay at Grace Prep. 
Even though it was so difficult to ask each of the students to complete 13 different personality tests, I knew that the results would be something so valuable. More than anything, I learned about the nature of God this year than I ever have in my life. From the start of this proposal and my first proposal being turned down, God has shown me just how intricately designed is his plan is for my life. I recently listened to a podcast that said, saying you struggle with giving up control is like saying you struggle with x-ray vision. You can't struggle with something you never had in the first place. That is what I learned most through this project. There are always going to be circumstances that happen that are out of my control. The only thing I can control is my response to them. I would like to thank my family. Mom, you have never failed to put my needs before yours. You've exemplified what it means to fiercely pursue my faith. And above all else, I will never be able to thank you enough for that. Dad, thank you for keeping me grounded. Always making me laugh when I call you homesick and taking me to Red Lobster. To my sisters, thank you for your love this year. I couldn't have done it without you. I wouldn't want to be the middle child between anyone else. To the Harrises, you've been my home away from home this year. I've been engulfed in love by your family, and I can't thank you enough for opening your home to me. Mrs. Moyer, thank you for being an amazing advisor and answering my many, many questions. Seriously, there were a lot. To Dr. Canizero, my mentor, thank you for providing me with many resources and always checking up on me. To my seniors, thank you for supporting me this year. I'm so proud to see how far we've come over the past seven months and especially over the past four years. And last but absolutely not least, I'd like to thank the Grace Prep staff and students. You're the reason I returned to Grace Prep and I'm reminded of that often. Taking 13 personality tests is a lot to ask and I'm so thankful to each of you who did that with smiles on your faces. Thank you to the staff who is extremely understanding in my travels back and forth to see my family. I am so grateful. I'm extremely proud of what I've accomplished through my project. While the inward transformation would have been enough for me, it's hard to calculate personal growth, put it into words, and present it in a portfolio. Through my project, I enabled the students with tools that they could use to ask the hard questions and learn more about themselves. With their results, I created a website that enables the teachers to know their students in a much more comprehensive way. With that website, I learned so much about design and functionality in creating online resources. With the help of Connor Williams, I created the IDIQ logo that is seen on my website. I integrated my project into the curric curriculum by leading a 242 about the importance of knowing God, teaching a leadership class about the benefit of understanding one's leadership styles, creating discussion questions for the D group leaders on the importance of knowing their spiritual gifts, co-teaching a lifetime sports elective with Riley Redman, educating the teachers about how to use my website, and finally, adding several of the tests to the enrollment for income, incoming students to complete upon coming to Grace Prep. I have learned many things from this project. Above all, I have learned that in order to know yourself, even in the slightest, you must look to God to know who he is and who he created you to be. Thank you. Great job, Abby. Um, I told you already how much I appreciated this project from the get-go. Um, it, it interests me, it's exciting to me, and the work you did is outstanding. It really is, like, excellent work. Um, and the fact that you read The Gift of Being Yourself, I did not know that. Somehow I missed that. One of my favorite books of all time. Normally we give people that book because we're like, oh, you need this. <laughs> um, it's a great book. Um, I have a couple questions just I'm interested in, in, in knowing, and um, one of the first ones is leadership styles. You bring that to the leadership class, that makes a lot of sense. Why did you not give that to the student body? Yes, that's a great question. I thought that it would be more interesting to um, make that maybe a yearly thing that Jared would, uh, I haven't actually talked to him about it, but I think it would be successful if he presented that just to the leadership class so that he could get to know them better. I also was already had already decided on the 13 tests I was given to the students, and deciding those tests was very difficult because I wanted to choose a wide array um, and cover different things. And through working style and um, the career aptitude test, I felt like they got 
uh, somewhat of an accurate picture about how they work with other people. So um, that's why I chose to kind of just strictly give the leadership style test to the leadership class. Super, great. Um, as someone who has every student in the school in class, I know how difficult it is to get them to hand in things for grades, mm -hmm. let alone hand in something that reflects your grade. Um, and one of the things I want to ask you, as someone who definitely, this was a control issue, and I, I love that you bring that up, how did you feel when people, your peers, didn't seem to care enough to hand in your information that would help you do this project? How did you deal with that? How did you go about, I mean, how did that go for you? It was a lot of being understanding, because it is a lot to ask. Um, I get that it's not everyone's cup of tea to sit down and kind of analyze yourself, but it, it's mine. <laughs> so I think that um, I was passionate enough that them not doing the tests, it didn't really, it, it kind of hurt my, um, my website whenever people wouldn't um, give me their results. But I think that it's just more fun for the students to know more about themselves. So um, as far as my efforts could have gone to get them to take the tests, I could do everything but hold their hand while they took it. So true, <laughs> yes. Um, I actually used your website to prepare for all of the panels I'm on. I just want you to know that. I want to put that out there because it's great. And I'm, I'm excited about that. Um, and having that resource is, is, is wonderful. My question to you, my last one for you, is how do you plan to use this in the future? Is this something you want to go into? Um, to be honest, when I, when I look at the Enneagram, an eight is a great, and, and a leader is a great person to have in a situation that is going to challenge people to really sit down and look at themselves. Is this something you see in your future, working with personality types in counseling or anything like that? Because, I mean, the work you did here shows me that you have a knack for it. Thank you. I think that the coolest part of my project for me has just been the way that I can apply it pretty much in anything that I do. Um, I learned it through um, being one of the captains on the soccer team to being even just a senior um, as an upperclassman in my interactions with people uh, in a workplace or with my family even and thinking about the other person and how they receive news the best and how they need to be spoken to. And that for me, no matter what I choose to go into, I've always been passionate about um, the psychology and counseling world um, and why people think the way that they do. Um, so I could absolutely uh, use that in my future. Luckily, no matter what I do, I think that this has provided such a, a foundation for knowledge of other people um, and just thinking about what others need. So, yeah. You did an excellent job. Thank you. You're welcome. All right, Abby, um, I, you know that I've told you this already because I'm just very proud of you. I was really happy to be your advisor this year. Um, you've just worked so hard and worked all throughout the year, and it was just fun to, to work with you, and I'm, I'm very proud of you today. Um, so just some points about your presentation today. Your preparation was really evident, and you're a great communicator. You're just gifted communicator. I mean, I like to hear you give a speech, and you did a really great job today. Um, the research that you put in, and not everybody has a chance to look at all of the research, but I do. It was phenomenal. You took it very seriously, and um, you have so much background knowledge on, on these topics now. Um, your professional contacts were excellent. We always look at that. Um, I, I enjoyed discussing this with my D group. My, my D group, personally, they really enjoyed the um, spiritual gifts discussion, and they remembered a lot of the taking these tests and how much it actually helped them. So, you know, you hear a lot of the negative of people not wanting to do the tests, but there are, there are people who it had a benefit for. So I want to encourage you with that. Um, and it, it just, everything you did was wonderful and professional. The website, I absolutely love your website. I knew you were doing a website, but even I was really surprised when I saw it, you know, when you presented it to staff, because it, it's so um, usable, professional, and um, 
I love I love having it. I love having the information. You know, I look at it sometimes when I I need to prepare something, honestly, because I just think it's a wonderful resource. I'm happy that it may we may have some of those um, pieces in enrollment because I think it'll be really useful for us actually. Um, so I want to talk to you. I just want to ask you a question about the website. The, the website where we can look at it as teachers and we can see the personality tests and the spiritual gifts and all of those things. How did you develop that as a website? Because I know that really it's not something that you normally do is develop a website. So, so in my initial proposal, well, I guess for this project, my initial proposal, um, Bob thought that it would be helpful to have that information that the tests or that the students took with the tests to have the, stu the that available to the teachers, which would make sense. Otherwise, why would they take it in the first place? But I thought that the most effective way um, to present that information would be through a website. That way, it wouldn't have to be paper information that the that the teachers would have to carry around. That wouldn't seem practical to me. So I began doing research about the different website creators um, online. And I came to Wix, which is the designer that I used. And I don't know if it was a mistake or just me being a beginner, but I chose to start like from scratch. And Wix has this template, these different templates that you can use. And for my like project portfolio website, I used a template, and it was so easy. But for the uh, IDIQ website, I started with a blank uh, slate, and I was, <laughs> I thought that that was how I was supposed to do it, and then it was so easy in the actual portfolio website. But um, it was a lot of YouTube videos, and Wix videos, and um, overall though, it, once I got the hang of doing the different things, like adding the junior class to, the junior and sophomore class who have like 22 people, it gets really good at like inputting the pictures, and then I know that the height is four seven eight, and I know I know that the width is one eight eight. So then I would just have to input that and make all the pictures the same size. So after a while, it became kind of like mechanical, but it was definitely hard in the beginning. Okay, yeah, I just wanted to get an understanding of that because it just looks like wow, that's that's cool, that's awesome, that must have been easy, but actually, it really it was a lot of work. Um, yeah, it was a it was a really um, awesome project. Just good writing, good you know across the board presenting all aspects. Thank you. Really good. Thanks, Abby. Abby, great job. Thank you. Uh, I was surprised I actually gave you twelve tests to administer. That's a lot of <laughs> bubbles on that. When you said that, I thought I couldn't have given you that many, but did. good work. Um, <laughs> uh, I love these tests. One of the neat things for me about the senior projects is, and it really worked out better than ever this year, is a lot of times I insert things I've wanted to be, have done for the last 15 years of Grace Prep and see if they work. I think this year more than ever, they were done, so many of them were done in such a great job that we made huge gains in what we were able to offer the students and things like that. So, um, so this is a big deal for me because I've always been a big fan of these tests and knowing how much they help us help the students. Um, a few things. You're very poised. You look beautiful in there, up there. Uh, the whole mic change thing, you just did flawlessly. Like that he came up, you just didn't even make a deal out of it, and I was actually impressed with that. Um, I think you did an excellent walkthrough of your research to give us a little bit of description, but not stand there forever, you know, going through that. Um, I'll invoke the Ernie axiom of big text on some of the things that when you showed that we couldn't really see. And what we're talking about is if you're going to show a web page, show it as big as possible, use the whole screen or whatever. So trademark Ernie. Um, what was the hardest moment of your website or of your uh, project? Of my whole project or my yeah, website? Yeah, your whole project, just the process. The, the, the most difficult part was just getting participation from the students. I think, like, like I said before, I would get why it would be so difficult for someone to sit down and take 12, especially if they weren't like keeping up with it. Um, so I had to go about it with a lot of understanding and just kind of being like, okay, how about we do one today and one tomorrow? But um, 
after I got some of the help from the teachers, it was, I got a lot more results and that was helpful. So even though that was the most difficult. Also, the documentaries for the juniors, I would say just watch one, you know, like just get it started because I ended up starting my documentaries in January even though the whole time I was like, I knew, I know that I need to watch documentaries. I just need to get started. So Mrs. Moyer um, kind of was just like, just watch one, and then, and then it'll get easier. And it did. So there were a couple different aspects of it. I love documentaries. So that's why I put them in there. But did they help? Yeah, they did. And so if you watch them early, it's going to give you information about your project probably. So I love how you said, I just said, oh, maybe just do one now, maybe one tomorrow and be sweet about it. Because I read in your thing, I read a, an email in your thing that says, if you do not take this survey, I will look for you, I will find you, and I will make you take it. Yeah. yeah so that's the other approach you took. Yeah. Yeah. Like, everyone receives uh, instruction differently. And it was... <laughs> And it was then, you know, you said it was a joke, but it was, I think that's hilarious. Um, uh, I mean, basically you had, what, 75, with staff and everything, almost 75 people mm -hmm. to take 13 different tests. So that's like a thousand and something tasks that had to be done. So that's relatively impressive to say the least. Thank you. Um, Your strength of timeline is awesome, particularly starting with... I want to ask you about the rejected bubbles, because that seemed to be a bigger deal in your life than, that was in your, than, than you said in your presentation. Was that a hard thing? I felt like I devastated you, but I just did I mean, my I best. I did cry like three times in that meeting. That's true. So that was good. Well, so in my sophomore year, well, beginning in seventh grade, I had a passion for India, and I felt like I was going to be going over there at some point. Um, and then beginning my sophomore year, we had um, the, this couple come into my church and speak about their ministry in India, and I started getting really involved with them. Uh, so I had already had professional contacts, and um, I'd been on several phone calls with this girl named Brooke, who is the director of uh, Anugra, which is the women's ministry, and it was centered about uh, emp empowerment. And I th what I've learned is that um, that project was extremely outward and very outreach-focused and, and extrinsically focused, and this project is nothing like that. It's very, like introspective and forced me to ask really difficult questions about myself and answer questions that maybe I wasn't prepared to answer. Um, so yes, in the time and in the moment, it was devastating. And I didn't like you very much. <laughs> but now, I'm thankful. I'm, I'm thankful because it ended up being beneficial. Remember that for the future. Juniors, if you cry, and you don't like me, it may pass. It may pass. There'll be a box of tissues there. But Well, I appreciate you being flexible. I know that you came in with a great proposal. I can't even remember why we didn't do it, but it was all done and fantastic. But I can't remember the rest of that story. So uh, I prefer to stuff trauma. Um, let's see. Were the tests free? Do pa so parents have access to them. Do they know that? No. I mean, your niece is excellent. And she's the only, she's the only one who even mentioned that her, um, her mom was really interested to see if the parents would have access to that. Um, I never really even got in contact with the parents, but that's something I could totally do. Um, there were, in my post-test evaluation Google form, I asked students if they would be okay if, I share, if this information was available to, to anyone. And several of them said no, so I made their page private, uh, password protected for the teachers, and gave the teachers access to that. Um, so that's something I could absolutely do. It would just be a matter of sending a link. I think that would be a great, I mean, the return on that investment would be great because parents would absolutely love it. Mm -hmm. I looked for Robbie's name. Apparently he missed a whole bunch of tests, so... 
Robbie, wherever you're at. <laughs> well, I know where you're at. Fill out those tests. Um, <sighs> I mean, sitting here, actually listening to the panel, I realized how hard that website is. I mean, you had to put 75 people's stuff on there, and that's really complicated. I asked, I asked uh, Dylan to bring up this opening video because I thought it was excellent, and I, I know that you don't have time to show it in the, the presentation, but I really thought it would be worthwhile showing. I'll go, I'll go over a couple of things here, too. First of all, using the point of grace was smooth. Yeah. <laughs> and that was dear to my heart. It's just like a big hold. It's like a big sloppy wet hug. Thank you. Isn't that what the guy from Frozen says? I don't, yeah. Oh, really? oh, Hi. I see it in Welcome the, to I IDIQ. The my name is Abby Galliano, and this is a website to help you help your students to the best of your ability. I created this site so that you can get to know your students in a much more comprehensive way. Specifically, this can be useful if you are faced with a problem student who you are having trouble reaching. Suggesting these tests be taken by your students requires them to have some self-awareness, which can be surprisingly difficult in high school. There are three sections to this website. The first is the introduction to each of the tests that I gave the students. Under each test tab is a summary of the test and a link so that you can take them if you wish. The second section is all about the students. If you click on any of the tabs that start with class of, you will be able to see all of the students listed with pictures. Each of the test results can be found under the students' names. Finally is the interpreting the results section. This is a section that is specifically designed for you as a teacher. Each test will be listed along with practical application points to reach your students. There would be little to no point to all of this if it wasn't made personal to you as a teacher. Point of Grace 33 states, we believe that a student will be transformed by the teacher who finds their passion. In order to find their passion, you must know them well. I hope this website is a tool that aids in effectively helping your students become the best students they can be. Thank you. That is amazing Hi. to me. Did, did you memorize that? Really? You were reading that? Because it didn't look like it. That was great. That's hard to do. And it was really well written. Um, so I thought that was impressive. Um, do you know what your participation rate was? Did, did most students fill out most tests or what? I don't... You were right. <laughs> My mom said that I should do that. Um, I don't have an exact number, but... Um, I don't have an exact number. It looked like a lot of them did, though, right? Yes, yes. Most of them took most of them. Yes. Uh, I love how it spread to families, at least the Barker family. I think that's really great. I love how it was integrated in the GP application. Um, one of the things I've written here is that your independence on this project, as far as my involvement goes, was you really were very independent from me on it. You didn't ask a lot of questions, didn't invite me to take any of the tests, and things like that. So I was really, in a, and I was really, I will take the test if you ask me. I would like to get, I, would like, I think it would be fun. I love taking the test. So, um, so that was really good. You were very independent. It sounds like you worked with Deb a lot, but, you know, you ran with this on your own. Um, I love projects that have, we talk about coherence, right? Coherence is that every aspect of the project works well together. And is interconnected, students successfully synthesize their experience and research in a compelling conclusion. And this was one of the most coherent projects we've ever had as far as just being multifaceted and coming all together. Uh, I thought it was terrific. It's a, something I've wanted done for a long time, but I know it took a lot of work. And uh, I would really encourage everybody to go to see that website because it's very, very well done and well thought through. I honestly, just the way it's done with all the pull-down menus of each class. What happens is you push on, you know, class of 2020 and all the students' names come up and you can click on that student name 
and that has their personality profile, which I think is awesome. So I am really impressed with this. I think it's absolutely terrific, and um, I congratulate you on getting it all done on time, on budget. All right. Thanks, Abby. We talk to the parents a little bit. You can come up front wherever you want. I'm the designated spoke person, spokesperson for the Gallianos, well represented. Uh, grandparents, thank you for live stream. They're participating, and Haley is in Israel, and she is watching. Um, so lots of love and support. Um, Abby told me last night that I had to speak. Thank you. So this is literally back of the envelope or back of the um, program here. But I, I just have to say, you blow me away. This young woman blows me away. She doesn't even realize how important this topic is. This is an amazing topic, and I would encourage those of you who have not taken this test or these tests to take them, because I will tell you as a leader of a team in the workplace, that skill and intelligence will take you so far. Emotional intelligence will take you all the way with the Lord's help. If you do not have emotional intelligence, good luck. You need to be self-aware. It is the most important topic. You would be amazed. You said in your project that as a teenager, it's hard to be self-aware. I will tell you as adults, it's even more ingrained in you not to be self-aware if you're not deliberate about it. You need to be self-aware. And, and gals and guys, take advantage of this project. It truly is an amazing one. And what's amazing to me is I had nothing to do with this. You talk about her independence. I had nothing to do with this. My daughter is amazing, absolutely amazing to me. So I'm going to tell you what I wrote down. The name Abigail is derived from the Hebrew word Abigail, which means the father's joy gives joy. I can't tell you how much joy this young woman brings to my life. She is an amazing person. What she's been through in the last year and what we've been through as, in a, fam as a family, largely self-inflicted. <laughs> but God is good. God is gracious and merciful. His mercies are new every morning. And in the fire, we draw nearer to him. And my daughter has grown tremendously through this journey. And I, I wouldn't trade it as hard as it's been. Her growth in her relationship with Jesus Christ has amazed me and encouraged me. How fitting a name for my daughter. And I didn't even know that when we named her Abigail, Abigail. Hebrew, father's joy gives joy. There are so many things and qualities that, about you that I admire and I'm proud of. Your work ethic, as if unto the Lord. No question, as if unto the Lord. Your steadfastness, your persistence, your leadership qualities, your vocal talent. You use that for God's glory. But what I'm most proud of is your relationship to the Lord. It means more than any of those things that I named. You're an amazing young woman. Treasure the time that you spend with him each morning and don't ever let anything get in its way. This is what makes her strong. She is a dear daughter of God who spends time with him each and every day. She invites me to Bible studies that we do together now online. It's an amazing thing and that's your lifeline. That's your lifeline. So I'm going to say just a couple more things. I'm going to speak a blessing over you, if that's okay. 
May you seek him first, always and forever, and all you do. May you find comfort in his ability, not your own. May you find confidence in him, even when hard times come and you don't know what to do. May your eyes remain fixed on him. May you walk in the security of your assigned worth in him. May the Lord give you a heart that desires to extend your hand to those in need. And may you be a woman of joy and laughter whose Christ-centered character is what makes you beautiful. Thank you for letting me say all this. It's a gift to me.